about a month ago, the boys and I took a trip east to go investigate this listing about a Jeep Comanche. Per usual, it doesn't run. But at least this time, for a pretty good reason. It doesn't have a fuel tank. The previous owner said it's all it needed to start. Guaranteed to run. Sure. So fuel tank was removed to add a back half cage to this thing in an attempt to make it a pre-runner. Beyond that, though, it turns out to be a pretty nice looking vehicle. It doesn't have a lot of problems, has a small lift on it, has some really nice meaty tires that are alone, probably upwards of over a grand. This vehicle is a perfect example of someone's project that they fell out of love with and allows us to kind of capitalize on that value as long as it runs. And the best part, the guy only took $3,250 for this vehicle. We basically stole it. What we know about this car thus far is that the previous owner removed the original bed and installed this cool looking tube chassis, truck bed looking thing so that he could install a more aggressive suspension system and also adequately hold spare tires and other pre-running accessories. Not only are we going to be completing this rear tube chassis, but we're going to be tying that in to the rest of the Comanche, not forgetting safety. Because if we do end up rolling this thing when Aaron's taking it off some sweet jumps, we'll be all right. Beyond all of that, we're gonna be adding some front fenders, we're gonna be putting some bucket seats in, adding a four link system front and rear, and some beefy, beefy shocks to the front and back. And don't forget big old tires, because that's what you need when you go off road into some 35s. Now, before we go spending a bunch of time Lots of time, so much time and or money on this thing. We need to address the elephant in the room. The thing doesn't run. We don't even know if we're gonna make it to the desert to do any desert bashing, because once again, we didn't get to test drive it first. <laughs> it does not run good at this point. First things first, from a mechanical standpoint, we can't really test the car until it's running. And this thing didn't have a fuel cell, so we're gonna mount this thing up, put some fuel in it, take it for a test drive. We're about halfway done installing our fuel system. Right now, the fuel pump doesn't really fit in the mount, doesn't really work all that well. So we're gonna put a known good one in, mock up our system, and hopefully be ready to start this thing. We just finished installing the fuel pump, ran all the fuel lines. Now we're ready to fill her up, test for leaks, and if that's good, we're ready to try and start this thing. That is if Dan gets those seats in or not. What's up, boys? Oh, yeah. What's up? Here we go. A moment of truth. If it doesn't start... <laughs> I have all the faith in the world that that gentleman did not lie to us. Ready, guys? Uh-huh. Go for it. Oh, she Ooh. wanted to. Try her again. Do it. Crank it. Yeah. Sounds good. Oil pressure. Dude. It's alive! Got our rear axle 100% stripped. Next step is to prep the chassis for the four link, but we got to cut off these tabs. Best way to do that, plasma cutter. The seats sit almost against the back of the cab. There's no place to mount a harness bar for the belts. What we're gonna do is blast some holes through the rear firewall and then weld some tube across to hold the actual belts. It's gonna be an externally mounted belt system. The things we do for fun. Might as well make it look pretty. We're gonna test fit our new four link mount and see if there's anything else we have to remove. Hopefully it fits. 
when I spoke to Andy, he said most guys put it about an inch behind the cab, which would put it right around here. Go for it, Andy. So oh, we are like two inches. So it's, we're it's hitting a flare. flare. The brackets are welded into the back of the truck. Next step is to get some of our four links in place, line it up, and see where we're gonna weld our lower brackets on. And at that point, we're gonna test the articulation, and if we don't get any binding, then it's kind of a job well done. Wait, we gotta do the job first. So far, so good. Yes. Oh. Oh. I'm good. Okay, the seats are all in. I have these two belts to go. Then the interior is basically done. Those guys have been mobbing hard on the rear end, which is going to be the hardest part of this because it involves the most fabrication. Then we move on to the front, and then we get to go play in the desert. I'm super, super excited. We made it. We're here at Montessa. The boys and I spent five long days working on this Jeep, taking it from just a plain, everyday off-road vehicle to this hopefully super capable off-road vehicle. It took more than just the three of us. It was a big team effort. Carbon sent us some sweet shocks. 4x4 Ironman Fab helped us out a ton on how to install this four-link. If it wasn't for Wade spending a bunch of time on this cage, we wouldn't even be here. Left, left, left. There you go. Last more. Keep going, keep going. Hold up. Back it up. More. Right there. You ready for this, Dan? Ready. Let's do this. Rock and roll. Now, our jump may look really lame on camera, but if you hit it with enough speed, this is actually gonna be pretty aggressive. Godspeed, Dan. Yeah, and actually on top of that, hopefully it doesn't get hurt. They just asked me to go half speed on it, but I'm gonna give her the full beans. All right. <laughs> the front is so stiff, it just acted like a pogo. So it was like, boom, and the rear just soaked it up. And it survived. <laughs> I love this truck. It climbed, it bashed, and it just soared like an eagle. We're on top of the world right now. <laughs> this is what a wind feels like, boys.